When you see yourself the way that God sees you, then you walk in the authority of the believer. No weapon formed against you will prosper, and you can be who God has called you to be. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Experience More. I'm Pastor Frank Montgomery, and I'm believing God has a word for you today, and that it's not an accident. It's not just by chance that you're watching and or listening here today, because I got, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you uh, about your identity in Him. Now, not just in general, but something very specific that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you and help you uh, and, and, and counsel you to change. He wants to bring you closer to Him, and He wants you to have a better life here on this earth. Uh, and now it's not has anything to do with your standing with Christ, but I believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you, convict you, not condemn you, but convict you about an area that if you would make this little tweak, this little adjustment, I believe God's going to do something great in your life. Uh, maybe I'll set it up by saying when we see ourselves the way that God sees us, we're not going to allow fear or doubt or worry. And maybe that's the word for some of you. Maybe you're today dealing with just worry and anxiety and fear, or maybe it's loneliness or depression. Maybe it's anger or selfishness. Maybe it's just being impatient. Whatever it is, when we see ourselves the way God sees us, when we say about ourselves what God says about us, uh, that those negative influences have no place in our life. Oh, sure, they try. Sure, they're, we're in this world, and so we're going to be tempted. We're going to be tested. We're going we're gonna to have tribulations. But we just don't allow them to impact or influence our lives the way that the world deals with it. No, we deal with it as believers. We walk in the authority of the believer. And so we rise up. We say, oh, no, that's not me. We rise up and we, we speak to the mountain. We stay, stomp our foot on the devil's neck and we say, no, not today, devil. Not now, not ever again in the name of Jesus. This is how we walk. and This is how we talk as believers. Now, we don't walk that way. If we don't see ourselves as believers, we don't see ourselves the way that God sees us. If we see ourselves just in this world, just trying to get by. No, God has set up a, a like a blueprint for our lives. He set up a plan and it's in his word. And when we read the scriptures in his word and we go, oh, that's what God says about us. Then that's our blueprint for life. That's our, our plan. We know how to deal with situations when trials or tribulations or struggles come in our life. We go, Oh no, I know how to walk in the authority of, of the believer because I'm a believer and I walk in that authority because of what the word says about me. So when you don't know what the word says, when you don't have the blueprint, you're just like living life kind of willy nilly. You're just bumping through, coasting through, floating through life, just depending on whatever feels good, depending on what the government tells you, depending on what politicians tell you, depending on what your boss tells you or Uncle Billy Bob or Aunt Betty. You're just depending on whatever is around you to, to allow the circumstances to dictate who you are. Mm, but when you see yourself as Jesus sees you, as you see yourself the way the word of God describes you, how God created you, changes everything. It changes everything. But you have to see to yourself that way. You've got to see, you've got to have that in your heart and you've got to say it out of your mouth and walk it out. Walk in the authority of the believer. So here's some statements or some blueprints, if you will, to help you walk in the authority of, the, of a believer. Walk in the authority of living this life in Christ. Romans chapter 6 and verse 11 teaches you that you're a spirit being and that spirit being is born again and you are alive to God in him. Through Jesus, you were dead, but now you're alive because you said, Jesus, you're my Lord. Now you're born again. Like you were dead before, but now Jesus, you're my Lord. Now the Bible says you will be born again. Jesus said in John 3, 3, except a man be born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. So when you say yes to Jesus, you're born again. You're alive to him. 
You're a, you're a spirit being that was dead, but is now alive. You read that in Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 1 says, you're cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You've been made righteous. You're, you're, you're cleansed because of Jesus. You've been forgiven of all of your sins because of all your right standing, because of what all you did, because of all of your works, because you went to church enough, because you worked hard enough. No, because of Jesus, you are cleansed by his blood, not your works, by his blood on the cross. You just said yes to Jesus. You just believed. You believed in Jesus and you said, okay, I, I surrender all to Jesus. Now you are, re you are cleansed by his blood. Galatians chapter three, I am rescued from the curse of sin. Many translations say, I am redeemed from the curse of sin. You, you were rescued from it. You were redeemed from it. That's, that's not your new life. You have a, you've got a coupon. Go re redeem that coupon. Well, Jesus redeemed you. He, he cashed in that coupon for you. And so that you are rescued or redeemed from the curse of sin. The evil from the old covenant, the, the evil from this worldly life, the evil from destruction. No, Jesus redeemed you. He rescued from you from that. We just believe. And so you don't have to live like the old man. No, when that old man rises up and he does try to rise up, you say, oh no, I'm rescued. I'm redeemed from the curse of sin. I'm redeemed from, from evil. I've been rescued from des destruction. You can only say that way, say that about yourself if you know what Galatians chapter 3, 13 says. Uh, how about 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18? I'm secure in Jesus and the evil one does not touch me. Ooh, I love that one. I'm secure. I'm settled in Jesus. I'm complete in Jesus. I am whole in Jesus and the devil, the evil one does not touch me. That's how I pray over my family. That's how I pray over my wife and my marriage. That's how I pray over my children. That's how I pray over how our church. That's how I pray for you. I'm like, oh no, in the name of Jesus, my brothers and sisters, the evil one does not touch them. They've been, they're, they're secure in Jesus and the evil one does not come near their dwelling. Read Psalm 91. You read Psalm 91 and say, oh yeah, it might be happening all around, but it's not coming near me. Now you may if you don't know the scriptures, if you don't have the blueprint for your life, well, now you're just gonna just go along with the flow. You're gonna go along with the crowd. But if you got the blueprint, then you go, okay, well, I don't care what everybody else is doing. I know what the blueprint says. Well, the blueprint says in Romans chapter six again, and verse six, it says, I'm no longer a slave to sin. My old self was crucified with Jesus. Not with you, but with Jesus. And therefore, sin has lost its power in my life. Sin has lost its power in my life. Oh, but Pastor Frank, you don't know what I, you don't know the power that sin has over me. Now, well, I don't want to know. I just know what the Bible says. So yeah, I get tempted. Yeah, there are, there are opportunities around me all day long, influences around me that want to make me be impatient, that make me want to be selfish, make me want to be angry, make me want to be insecure, make me want to be discouraged. All the things that are going to distract me from, the, from God's perfect will and helping me to experience all that God has for me and distracting me from the, the, the blueprint of God. Yes, but I remember that I'm no longer a slave to sin and my old self was crucified with Jesus therefore sin has lost its power in my life come on say what God says say the word of God that's a blueprint for your life how about this one second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 I'm a believer and I see the light of the good news I'm a believer and I see the light of the gospel of Jesus I love that one because that's the scripture in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 4 where it says the God of this world, the enemy, the devil has blinded the minds of the unbeliever and they, they just live in darkness. They can't see the good news. They can't see the gospel of Jesus. So I just flip that around and I say, oh, here's what I say about me because this is what God says. I am a believer. I'm not an unbeliever. I'm a believer and I see the light of the good news. Come on now, church, be that way. See, I can see the light of the gospel of the, the saving grace of Jesus. I can see it because I'm a believer. That's how I speak. That's how I pray over you. That's how I pray over our congregation. Second Peter chapter one and verse three and four. I have everything I need for living a godly life. I share in his divine nature. I'm not trying to get more of his 
qualities in me. I am just, I, I'm just relaxing in his grace, in his goodness, and in his mercy. I have everything I need for living this godly life, and I share in his divine nature. Come on, say that. Say, I have everything that I need to live this godly life. <laughs> God has put that in you. And I believe that that nature is working in you. Colossians chapter 3, God's divine nature. Boy, I don't want you to miss that. God's divine nature is working in you. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Say this, I am his beloved child. I'm full of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And you're like, no, I'm not. I understand. But say what God's word says. Don't say what, what, what your negative behavior is. Say what God's word is. This is not just mind over matter or positive mental attitude. This is saying what the word of God, getting God's word in your spirit. So when you're tempted to be not gentle, impatient, bragging and prideful, not humble, when you're tempted to be mean and not kind, when you're tempted to just demand justice and be right and not merciful, Remember, I am a beloved child full of mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's Colossians 3.12. You got to know these scriptures. 1 Corinthians 2.16. I have the mind of Christ and I'm guided by his purposes. Oh man, I say this one all the time. I have the mind of Christ. I'm guided by your purposes. You're leading me, God. I'm guided by your, I have the mind of Christ. I have the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God. The mind of Christ is working in me. I have knowledge and understanding and wisdom in the name of Jesus. I have the mind of Christ. God, greater is you, are you in my mind than anything else. I keep my mind stayed. I have the wisdom of God. I pray these things. Why? Because I need it as a man. I need it as a Christian. I need it as a husband. I need it as a father. I need it as a friend. I need it as a pastor here on this, in, in our church. I need it for you. God, give me wisdom for our congregation. Come on, I have the, I have the mind of Christ. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Philippians 4, 17. I have the peace of God that passes all understanding and it guards my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Come on now. I have the peace of God that passes all understanding and it guards my heart and my mind. My heart and my mind. I have the peace of God. Some of you, we, you deal with anxiety and stress and depression and just just the pressures of life and just the stresses of life, just cares of this world overpower you and you just give in to it. And you're like, ah, I just need a drink or I need these pills or I got to go to counseling or I just need a vacation or I need to watch TV. And I just, I'm not saying maybe some of those things aren't going to be helpful, but man, I'm going to run to the word of God first. Some of those things can be harmful for you depending on how you're doing it. But you got to know that you can have the peace of God and the mind of Christ Jesus. But you got to know Philippians 4, 17. Keep your mind stayed on him and he's going to keep you in perfect peace. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. You dealing with fear? You dealing with doubt? You dealing with worry? Man, make sure you know that God has not given you a spirit of power, or of fear, but he gave you a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So say that. Say, I'm full of, 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 of love. I'm, spool, I'm full of power. I'm, I have a sound mind. I have a disciplined mind. I have self-control. Because of you? No, because of the spirit of God that's in you. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. I have the spirit of wisdom and understanding and the knowledge of Jesus. And the eyes of my heart are enlightened. Open the eyes of my heart, O oh God. Because this is how I see myself. This is how I deal with the problems of life. I run to the blueprints. And the blueprint for my life says, I have the spirit of wisdom. Man, what do I do with this situation in our church? Oh, I have, the, I have a spirit of understanding and knowledge of Jesus. What do you mean? Well, the word says, I, my, the eyes of my heart are enlightened. So God, in this marriage situation, in this financial situation, in this uh, health and healing situation, I'm praying, God, give me the eyes of my understanding. Give them, open up their eyes in the name of Jesus. 
James chapter four and verse seven says, I am submitted to God and the devil flees from me because I'm resist him in the name of Jesus. Come on, quote these scriptures. Romans eight and verse 37, I'm a conqueror and overwhelming victory is mine through Christ Jesus who loves me. First Peter two twenty four says, I'm healed, healed by the stripes or by the wounds of Jesus. Revelation 12 and 11 says, I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the word of my testimony. Colossians chapter one, I have the endurance, patience and joy because I'm strengthened with all, come on, over and over. I have no lack. I lift up my shield of faith. I live by belief. So many scriptures in here. Go to our website. Look at these from our recent service on Sunday. And I just pray that God will help you live and walk out these blueprints for your life and learn to say them. Memorize the scriptures or the basic principles. Write them out. Live by the blueprints of the word of God and you will experience all that God has for you. You know why? Because you're going to see yourself the way that God sees you and you're going to say about yourself what God says. I'm praying for you. I'm believing you're walking by faith and not by sight. Come on, be strong in the Lord and the power of his his might. God bless you and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 